welcome back. Jiu Jitsu 2000 here today. As you can see sitting in front of you, I have an aluminum bottle. Now I don't drink beer, but these uh, bottles uh, make really good alcohol stoves. And I'm going to share with you the process of, uh, of how to do that today. Now again, first things first, make sure you got your safety glasses clear of obstructions and put them on. So some of the things that I have on my table is I have a, a Sharpie, you know, some sort of permanent marker. I have this other bottle. It's, uh, it's also an aluminum bottle. And uh, what I've done is I've cut the bottom off and I've compressed the bottom to this using a clamp so that it'll fit. And I'll explain why I did that here in a few. I also have a little container. This is just to use as a measurement so I can make a mark. I have a cutting tool. I'm going to use a very thin little wheel to cut this. This aluminum is a little thicker than most uh, bottles. So I need to use that to cut it. I have a drill and in the in the end of my drill I have a 1 16th diameter drill bit. So these are some of the items that you'll need and now I'll take you through the process. Okay, the first thing that I like to do is I like to take this Sharpie, set my bottle down, and just spin the bottle around and make a mark. Now this Sharpie's kind of running out of ink, but nonetheless you can see that I've marked the bottle where I need to cut. The next thing I want to do is I want to flip it over and make another mark here. Same thing. Bear with me. I know this looks like a caveman's doing it, but I just need an idea of where I'm going to cut that bottle. Okay, so now I'm going to take my earplugs and my little cutoff tool here and I'm just going to cut the bottle all the way around on those marks that I made. One of the reasons I like that little light duty grinder is because it does such a good job and it's not real powerful I guess you could say so it's not like going to kick back super hard and hurt you or anything. So I'm trying to find an angle here. Okay, so there we have it. Okay, the next thing I want to do is I want to take the end of the grinder wheel and I just want to place it on on the wheel as it's spinning. And what this will do is this will kind of polish or clean up 
those rough spots that you see. I'm going to leave little burrs behind, but we'll, we'll get to those in a second. Main thing we want to do is get a nice, clean fit here. Okay, so that one looks good. Let's do this one. Okay, the next thing I like to do is on the inside of these little uh, pieces of aluminum, you can see all these little burrs. So any kind of, whether it's a screwdriver or anything, you just need something to go in there and remove those burrs. You can use a utility knife, pocket knife, piece of wood, anything. Piece of glass, you know, just something that you don't, you're not going to cut yourself with, but you want to just remove those burrs on the inside also come around the outside and do the same thing remove just we're, we're just deburring this can and it's not really hard to do because all all that aluminum is loose and it's just needing to be knocked off really you know just to where it's smooth to the touch don't get too crazy because it's not you know it's not that big of a deal just need to clean it up a little bit Okay, so just like that, nice and clean. Do the same thing with this one. And if you're wondering about the music that's playing in the background, that's Jack Johnson. One of my favorite uh, artists. Love his music. I think he's from Hawaii. really relaxing uh, music so there we go okay at this point you want to make sure that this one is just a little bit shorter than the other one okay so this one just a hair shorter that's going to be important when we put this together I'm going to show you a comparison of an Arizona tea can which is a little bit thicker than a normal can versus the thickness of these Bud Light cans. I hope you can see. The uh, Bud Light cans are almost twice as thick. So that just, you know, just goes to show you the durability of them. I mean, I squeeze this when it doesn't budge, but I can easily squeeze these. So, again, you know, just squeezing them it just shows the durability. Can't hardly squeeze those Bud Light cans. They're pretty thick. Okay, the next step in the process is to take this can and I'm gonna basically cut two little grooves going this way and two grooves going this way and those are gonna be grooves for the fuel to flow through so let me put my earplugs on and I'll cut those grooves That's, that's all we need for the grooves. Nothing too fancy. So 
So from here, I'm going to go ahead and take my little tool and knock the burrs out again, just like I did on the other part, just to get rid of the burrs. And if you're curious how deep I made them, I just made them the, the depth of this lip here. Okay, now it's time to put these pieces together. So what I want to do is I want to take the piece that has the fuel grooves cut in the bottom and I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to lay the one with the fuel grooves down inside. From here I'm going to take this other piece that I had and I'm going to put it right over the top here just like so. I'm just going to kind of squeeze it a little bit. From here I'm going to get my clamp and I'm going to clamp this thing together. And what's going to happen is hopefully the clamp will make the walls bend around the inner part. So we'll see how that goes. Okay, I have my clamp here. I'm just going to set my clamp here and slowly clamp this thing down. It's going to take a little bit of effort. I don't want to make it too hard. And I'm just kind of releasing and pushing, releasing and pushing. Just trying to get this thing clamped down. Let's take this off and look at it and see. Okay, good. Now we're starting to roll. See the aluminum starting to roll around? That's exactly what we want. So let's just keep doing it. What you can do also, if you have a little block of wood or anything, you can put the wood on the top and just kind of clamp that. And what that wood will do is it'll help make everything a little more straight, I guess you could say. It'll clamp it down a little, a little straighter. Let's take a look. See how it's kind of rolling? That's exactly what we want. We're going to have to go a little bit more and get a little more roll out of it. This is the hardest part. Oops. Dropped it. Let's take a look. Starting to look good. A little more and we're almost done. Let's take a look. Looks good. We have a nice little roll. Okay, the next thing that I want to talk about is if you look down inside the stove, right here where this part starts to come out, in this area, about where my thumb is, we want to put some holes. So about this high from the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of hold, I'm going to find something to try to hold my pin somewhat around that height and I'm gonna go ahead and mark it. Hopefully this will be close enough. Doesn't have to be perfect, it's just an idea of where the lines are gonna go, or excuse me, where the holes are gonna be. Kinda of primitive, but nonetheless we got a mark there, right? So that's what we want. Okay, from here, you wanna take your Sharpie, and we're going to need 16 holes. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, well, let's just do 14. 
That's close enough. 14 will work. Now we're going to take our drill and we're going to drill those holes. So again, this drill bit is 1 16th of an inch. Now we don't want to drill all the way through. You don't want to drill through this inner material. You just want to drill just through the outer material. So don't put a lot of pressure. So I'm going to go ahead and drill all these and I'll be back when the drilling is done. Actually I'll do a couple more here. If you don't push very hard, you'll feel your drill bit touching the inner wall as it pokes through. Now I'm not going directly on my marks, I'm trying to make them spaced about the same distance from each other. So I guess I didn't even need those side marks if I'm not going to follow them. But anyway, you get the point, right? So you want around 16 holes. I know I'm way off my marks here, but like I said, I'm trying to keep them spaced the same. So now we've got all our holes drilled. Let's take a close up look at that. Looks good, doesn't it? Okay, at this point, I'm going to take a little bit of denatured alcohol, put it on a rag, and I'm going to wipe the stove to get rid of all this ink. So there we have our stove with our holes nice and clean, no ink anywhere. Okay, now I'd like to take a little time and talk about some of the fuels that we can use in this stove and some of the ones that I like and why I like them versus other fuels. The first one on the left here is isopropyl alcohol. You can find this at Walmart, Walgreens, a lot of places. This is only 50% alcohol so I recommend not using this. It's very very difficult to light and not my first choice by any means. The second one that I have is also isopropyl alcohol. Um, this one's 70%. It will work in the stoves, but again, it uh, has a lot of water content in it, and it's hard to light. Um, this third one is 91% isopropyl alcohol. This fuel works pretty good in these stoves. Uh, I found this at Walmart. It's uh, one quart is around $3 or something like that, and it works great. But if you want to run the best fuel possible, I recommend denatured alcohol. That's really what burns best in these stoves. In fact, uh, this kind of fuel is what a lot of sailboat stoves use, like marine stoves. Um, it burns very clean, very hot. It's an excellent fuel for these stoves. The only downside to this denatured alcohol is the price. One quart, um, I believe I paid I think it was between six and eight dollars and you'll find it at your local hardware store generally it's in the painting section um, I happen to get this one at Walmart uh, back by the paint and the uh, paint thinners and the strippers and stuff like that so it works best but it's a little pricey so but in this test uh, where I show this stove burning I'm gonna be using denatured alcohol so I'm going to clear all this uh, fuel off the table and uh, I'll fill this stove and we'll fire it up. Okay, let's go ahead and fill this thing with fuel. And the fuel is very simple. You just pour it right down in here. No big deal. Don't worry if you spill a little bit on your table. I still, the uh, alcohol 
it's not a real high flashpoint type fuel so it's not like Coleman fuel where it's going to just go crazy or anything. So this will burn off real quick. And what we have to do now is we have to wait for this stove to prime. And what I mean by prime is I mean the aluminum has to get hot because between the outer walls of the can and the inner wall, it's going to get hot and that fuel is going to boil in between those layers of aluminum. And that boiling process turns that fuel into a into a gas and that gas will come out these ports and that's where our flames will be now because the lights are on you can't really see that it's lit but it is um, it's a very blue light so I'm gonna go ahead and kill some of these lights and we'll take a look at this thing in the dark And let me step over. One more light here. So there she is. cool thing about this stove design is you can set your pot for whatever you're going to cook right on top of the stove. So if I was going to cook, boil some water or something, I can put my pot right here. You can already hear the water heating up. So anyway, I had a little bit of uh, candle wax inside. That's why that flamed up on us. So that's the stove. Pretty neat little project. I noticed that it primed really quickly. The flames came out of the jets very quickly. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you found some good useful information here. Feel free to leave comments, feel free to subscribe, and again, thanks for watching. Have a good day everybody. Bye bye now. And here's a closer view of the stove in action. Okay, one more thing that I forgot to mention is how do you kill the stove? Right now I have a can, you can use your pot or anything like that, and the best way to kill it is just smother it. Just take the oxygen away from the fire, and the stove will go out very easily. So again, thanks for watching. Feel free to leave comments, feel free to subscribe, and appreciate it. Have a good day everybody. Bye-bye.